a constitutional republic, not a democracy. The ideal of a democracy is universal equality. The ideal of a constitutional republic is individual liberty. A democracy always degenerates into dictatorship, which promises government guaranteed equality and security, but it delivers nothing but poverty and serfdom for the people it robs and rules. America was founded as a constitutional republic to safeguard the liberties of the people against the tyranny of democracy or of one-man dictatorship. In this century, great strides have been made toward the goal of subverting our republic into a democracy. The foremost tactic of the subverters is subversion of language. By calling America a democracy until people thoughtlessly accept and use the term, the totalitarians have obscured the real meaning of our principles of government. That is a summary of my report on a constitutional republic, not a democracy. The full report after a message from my sponsor. A democracy is a political system in which the people periodically, by majority vote at the polls, select their rulers. The rulers then have absolute power to make whatever laws they please by majority vote among themselves. In a constitutional republic, the people also, by majority vote at the polls, select rulers who make laws by majority vote among themselves. But the rulers cannot make any laws they please because the Constitution severely restricts their lawmaking power. The ideal of a democracy is universal equality. The ideal of a constitutional republic is individual liberty. In this century, great strides have been made toward the goal of subverting our republic and transforming it into a democracy. The foremost tactic of the subverters is subversion of language. By calling America a democracy until people thoughtlessly accept and use the term, totalitarians have obscured the real meaning of American principles of government. Note the following passages from a recent article distributed by the New York Times News Service. Quote, in the United States and in other leading democracies, recent years have seen perceptible growth in executive authority. As society becomes more equalitarian, it tends increasingly to concentrate absolute power in the hands of one single man. This is a voluntary surrender of a free people escaping from freedom to one autocratic master." End quote. And note the following from Gunnar Myrdal's An American Dilemma. Quote, In America, liberty often provided an opportunity for the stronger to rob the weaker. Against this, the equalitarianism in the American creed has been persistently revolting. And in the conflict between equality and liberty, equality is slowly winning. In America, conservatism has to a great extent been perverted into a cult of the Constitution. This is unfortunate since the Constitution is in many respects impractical and ill-suited for modern conditions. The worship of the Constitution is also a most flagrant violation of the American creed. The Constitutional Convention was nearly a plot against the common people." End quote. Now Gunnar Myrdal, a Swedish socialist, was hired by the Carnegie Corporation of New York in 1937 to direct a study of the Negro in the United States. He engaged a large staff, some of them communists and pro-communists, an American dilemma resulted, first copyrighted in the United States in 1944. In 1954, the Supreme Court handed down a school segregation decision, which deliberately violated the Constitution, reversed a previous Supreme Court decision, and lit a fuse touching off explosive violence, which has been shattering our society ever since. The court cited an American dilemma as one of the modern authorities on which it relied in preference to the Constitution for justification of its decision. An American dilemma written by a Swedish socialist provided a basic rationale for the conversion of our free republic into an equalitarian democracy. Myrdal contends that the American Declaration of Independence, 1776, proclaimed the ideal of an equalitarian democracy because it contains the phrase, all men are created equal. Eleven years later, the Constitution created not a democracy founded on the ideal of equality, but a republic founded on the ideal of liberty. This is why Myrdal says the Constitutional Convention was nearly a plot against the common people. But he and those who parrot his ideas are either ignorant or dishonest. The Constitution was ordained specifically to safeguard the principles of liberty proclaimed by the Declaration of Independence. 
The Declaration's phrase, all men are created equal, means that men are equal before the law and before the creator, regardless of their inequality in human society. The Declaration says that men are endowed with unalienable rights and that the purpose of government is to secure these rights. The unalienable rights of man enumerated in the Declaration of Independence do not include equality, but they do include liberty, along with life and pursuit of happiness. Equality of all men in the eyes of God and before the law is a condition essential to freedom, but no other kind of equality is possible. Government efforts to achieve material equality will produce crushing tyranny, but will not make people equal. The writers of the Constitution were anxious to safeguard liberty against dictatorship, monarchy they called it, but their chief anxiety was to protect the country against democracy. Edmund Randolph, delegate to the Constitutional Convention from Virginia, said the general object of the convention was to provide a cure for the follies and fury of democracy. Elbridge Gerry and Roger Sherman, delegates from Massachusetts and Connecticut, urged the Constitutional Convention to create a system to eliminate the evils that flow from the excess of democracy. Alexander Hamilton, delegate from New York, said, we are now forming a Republican government. Real liberty is not found in democracy. If we incline too much to democracy, we shall soon shoot into a monarchy. John Adams, one of the giants of the American Revolutionary period, said, democracy will envy all, contend with all, endeavor to pull down all. And when by chance it happens to get the upper hand for a short time, democracy will be revengeful, bloody, and cruel. Speaking of pure democracy, in which the people by majority vote act as their own lawmakers, instead of electing representatives to make laws, James Madison said, such democracies have ever been incompatible with personal security or the rights of property. A republic promises the cure for which we are seeking. Madison, known as the father of the Constitution, knew and said that enlightened men will not always be at the helm of government to serve as proper guardians of the public weal. He knew that unlimited political power cannot safely be entrusted to the nation's elected representatives to use as a majority of them see fit because, he said, a majority of a group of men is far more likely to be tyrannical than one man is. In a democracy, if a majority should develop hatred for all blue-eyed babies and order them eliminated, the babies could be legally executed because whatever a majority wants at any given moment is supreme law of the land in a democracy. How can liberty be safeguarded against the mindless, soulless tyranny of majority rule when government is founded on the principle of majority rule? Jefferson answered that one, in questions of power let no more be heard of confidence in man, but bind him down from mischief by the chains of the Constitution. In short, America was founded not as a democracy, but as a constitutional republic. We pledge allegiance to the republic for which our flag stands, not to a democracy. The Constitution requires a republican form of government for all states, but does not mention democracy, and neither does the Declaration of Independence or the Bill of Rights. The Constitution is a binding contract, enumerating limited powers which the federal government can legally exercise, prohibiting it from exercising any powers not granted in the contract. It denies federal officials the power to do whatever they claim to be necessary for the general welfare. Federal action not clearly authorized by the Constitution is illegal, even if approved by an overwhelming majority of the people, because all the elastic powers of government are left with the states. Ultimate power to change the organic structure of government was left with the people, but the means of making changes, amending the Constitution, were carefully prescribed to militate against hasty, unwise decisions by the people. As Benjamin Franklin left the State House in Philadelphia on the closing day of the Constitutional Convention, a woman asked him what kind of government the Convention had given America, and Franklin replied, a republic, if you can keep it. Very old and very wise, Franklin saw through the mists of time to the day when Americans might trade their freedom in a constitutional republic for the promise of government guaranteed equality and security in a democracy. And beyond that, to the day when democracy inevitably degenerates into dictatorship, guaranteeing nothing but poverty 
and serfdom for the people it robs and rules. The American constitutional system, unique in history, enabled Americans to develop a backward continent into the most magnificent nation of all time. The system was designed to prevent both tyranny by government and reckless rebellion by the people. We must restore it and keep it. And what can you do toward that end? Your job, you who care and understand, is to help educate others. I suggest that you might find a subscription to my report helpful. The Dan Smoot report on which these broadcasts are based is sent every week through the mails and will reach you long before the broadcast does. It contains documentation and details I cannot put on the broadcast. You can read it, make up your own mind, pass it on to others. I think it may be an effective tool for you to use to help educate and activate others. And only by this means can we restore our republic.